Welcome to uh, Neurosciences Connections. Hi, I'm Don Cleveland. I'm in the, uh, the professor in the Department of Neurosciences, and I'm here with three of my colleagues uh, to, to discuss the UCSD ALS Research Center, uh, which uh, encompasses world, what we think is world-class research to find a, an effective treatment for Lou Gehrig's disease, or ALS, and provides uh, high-caliber clinical care. Uh, so, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my team joined U UCSD in 1995, and since then we have worked very hard to develop what is the first gene silencing approach for treating an inherited form of ALS. That's now in clinical trial, and we're, we're, uh, we have our fingers crossed, hoping that it will really be a safe and effective uh, therapy. Let me now introduce uh, my, my other colleagues. First, there's uh, Larry Goldstein, who's head of the U UCSD uh, Stem Cell Initiative, Dr. Al Espada, who's just joined us from uh, Seattle, and, uh, and, and, and Dr. John Rabbits, uh, who has also joined us uh, just this last June from uh, Seattle. So let me start with uh, uh, J Dr. Rabbits. Welcome to UCSD. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you expect to, to happen now? Well, uh, thank you, Don. Um, it's, uh, I'm just getting unpacked and ready to go, and I think I came here with a vision of uh, really two directions. One is to help build on the clinical programs that were already here so that we can have the care for the patients and we're ready to test medications and drugs and new approaches to trying to cure it. And the second reason I'm here is uh, to bring my research ideas and the things that I've uh, been building on in Seattle to work with the, th the three of you guys uh, to try to get myself to a better level and also to try to influence some of your ideas if I can or if I'm in the right, right park. Yeah, so as, as I understand it, it, one of the contributions that you made recently was to follow disease course in patients quite carefully, demonstrating uh, uh, that it, it very frequently starts focally and then spreads. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, so I think one of the uh, the key drivers for me is that what I see in the clinic on a daily basis when I'm seeing patients is a disease that's much more three-dimensional and it's trying to bring those ideas of how could this disease, how could this occur in three dimensions, what is it that's spreading and uh, how, what are the mechanisms for that. It also gives an opportunity to try to research it in, in the outer directions on the nervous system and it gives me an opportunity to try to, to gather this material and then bring it into the research arena where we can study it and uh, try to and, and figure it out. So turning to Dr. Goldstein, Larry, why don't you tell us how, how the stem cell initiatives may affect uh, Lou Gehrig's, the, tr the therapy for Lou Gehrig's disease? Sure. Well, I think our most imminent project, what we hope will make the nearest term contribution to an effective treatment for Lou Gehrig's disease is work that came from experiments that you and I did and our teams have done over the past 10 years, which have shown, as you have so beautifully put it, that part of what happens in Lou Gehrig's disease is that the neighborhood surrounding the motor neurons goes bad in disease. And so the goal of the work we're now doing with you and a team of researchers at UCSD, the Salk Institute, and in private industry is to use stem cells to improve the neighborhood so that the motor neurons don't die in the disease. We're at the very earliest stages of that project. We're starting to test animals, but we're hopeful that if everything goes according to plan, we will get into clinical trials in the next several years. So cross your fingers for us. Thanks, Larry. And, and now, uh, Al, tell us, uh, you know, what, what brought you to UCSD and what do you see as the opportunities now? Right, well, so I came to UCSD about two years ago from the University of Washington. I came here because I was very excited about the opportunities uh, to advance our neurosciences research uh, with people like yourself and Larry. Um, and I also came here as part of an initiative um, to uh, advance uh, UCSD's uh, uh, abilities in the area of genetics and genomics. And as you know, uh, I'm an associate director of our new Institute for Genomic Medicine. And the idea is that disorders such as ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, that we may make considerable progress um, by looking at um, the genetic material from individual patients and try and profile exactly what is going wrong with individuals at a genetic level so that we can tailor treatments to treat their disease. And 
ALS uh, is uh, most often what's called a sporadic disorder where it doesn't run in families and it may be that there are different versions of ALS and by profiling uh, genetic information from individuals we may, become, may, may be able to come up with therapies that will work best for them. So that's something I'm very excited about. Is there anyth anything unique at, U that, at UCSD that really makes those genomic approaches uh, you know, more, more uh, more probably, probable of success than at elsewhere? Yeah, well, part of the reason why I came to UCSD is, um, as you well know, UCSD has a, an incredible what's called bioinformatics community. So um, our ability to apply these powerful technologies relies on being able to use computational strategies to make sense of all this information that we acquire. And UCSD has a long tradition of excellence in this area with uh, Cal IT Square being here uh, and other organizations, an outstanding department of bioengineering uh, that is focused on um, applying engineering strategies to deconstruct uh, complicated uh, information and come up with networks so that we understand how genes work together. So I was very excited because I feel, and I think many people in our field feel, that the bottleneck for um, being able to make sense of this complicated genetic information is being able to process it and understand it using what are called bioinformatics tools. And I think that UCSD is positioned better than perhaps anywhere else in the country to do that. Thanks, thanks Al. And now, John, I wonder if you could tell us a bit more of how you see the, the, the clinical care moving forward here at UCSD. Well, what we're trying to do is very quickly uh, uh, put into order a, a, a higher level of integrated care for the patients. It's very complicated to care for an ALS patient, and it takes an experienced professional team, uh, and it takes a lot of systems that are refined so that it's easy for the patients. They have enough on their plate, um, and so the clinical care needs to be very um, uh, crisp and, and, and easy for them. So we're building our, we're working on our clinical care programs, and one of the main things that we want to do is get ready for uh, research programs so that then when we're ready to do uh, uh, therapeutic trials, we're ready and we're organized and we have uh, that ready to offer the patients. And so we're being very aggressive and trying to be uh, open for that within, within it, hopefully within six months or a year, ready to receive the patients. Excellent news. Thanks, John. And that's it for this episode of Neurosciences Connections.